Okay, welcome to course training. Thank you very much for holding on. I appreciate that you're joining us today for our next webinar. Today we are talking about multigated parts and um, how to gate them, what the influences are. Let's give it a few minutes and uh, have a little overview. So what's the webinar uh, agenda? Cause and effect behaviors in injection molding, as we always do in our webinars, it is so important for us to discuss how the polymer, part design, mold design, and processing all work together. That's the mantra of Crew's training and the Circle of Knowledge training program. Today we'll talk about uh, gate symmetry and balance. We've picked a sample to show you how really important that is and uh, show you a few examples how to uh, evaluate a part that is multi-gated, so two gates and more. That for us is very important uh, to evaluate. Okay, so we have also a little Q&A, but keep in mind that we have limitations due to the online webinar structure. If you do have a question, please type it in in the chat, and if I see it, I will answer it. Otherwise, please keep in mind, you're always welcome to send us an email with your opinion, with your uh, suggestions, with your questions. We'll definitely get back to you very quickly uh, to answer all of your questions. Okay, so understanding complex behaviors and interactions in the injection molding industry is critical in order to stay competitive, of course. If uh, your part designers, mold designers, and processors would understand each other's business just a little bit better, they can talk to each other more effectively and therefore create more a more effective uh, design structure basically from a conceptual design to an actual high quality part you can get a much quicker uh, time to market so it would be nice if everybody would understand each other's business just a little bit better as we know molded parts have certain requirements um, there are for example critical dimensional tolerances structural strength appearance and uh, aesthetics uh, acceptable shrinkages and warpage behaviors, and of course we have assembly functionality. So all of these aspects in injection molding are rooted in part design. Yeah, if the part design is uh, challenging, <laughs> you all know it's easy, perhaps easy to build a mold, but it's definitely not easy to uh, mold a part that it has not been optimized. Okay. So therefore, we created our training program, the Circle of Knowledge, because we do really believe that it's important that you have to have a, a system in place where you can quickly go to, almost like a Wikipedia for injection molding, where you can go in, let me review a lesson about what I'm supposed to design, and uh, learn a little bit more, or refresh your memory, and then go back to uh, optimizing your design, being part design, mold design, or in the process. So our goal is really to build synergistic teams that understand each other's tasks and challenges, and we talk about part designs, mold designs, processes, and of course, polymer is part of that. Okay? Polymer material is very, very important to understand. Therefore, it always has to be within our uh, minds when we design a part. Let's get started on our lesson. Click it on. Modern mold design technology allows part designers to design more complex parts with integrated features. These types of parts may require multiple gates. When designing runner systems for a multi-gated part, Achieving a balanced process is important for a successful outcome. In this lesson, you will learn factors to consider when implementing a multiple gating strategy, how different runner dimensions affect filling behavior and injection pressure requirements, how to analyze tracer results to see behind the flow front of a part filling, how to use a runner design sensitivity test 
to determine whether small changes to runner and gauge sizes affect filling patterns. As you can tell, very simple tasks. However, you know, as we all know, nothing is simple in injection molding, especially when you talk about part design. So please pay attention to the individuals. I'll stop on the way and give you a little bit more input of, um, you know, my uh, additional information on each of these little topics. Okay, stay tuned. In this lesson, we will evaluate a gating strategy for the part on the screen. This is a single cavity mold. The part design and draft angle indicate how the part should be oriented for proper ejection. The parting line will be on the outer perimeter of the part. To determine the optimal gating strategy, we will evaluate the cavity layout, parting line, and part symmetry. The first step in evaluating a gating strategy is to determine whether the part will be designed with a hot runner system or a two or three plate mold. We will explore a hot runner and three plate mold design in this lesson. Based on the shape of our part, the gating areas we will evaluate are indicated on the screen. The goal is to achieve a balanced flow pattern with pressure distribution, which would lead to uniform packing, cooling, and shrinkages. Okay, that's again, this is very, very important. This is a very awkward part. Yeah, it has two distinct sections. It uh, divided basically in the middle. You have a smaller section on the left, you have a larger section on the right. And as always goes in injection molding, you're trying to create a uniform fill behavior with uniform temperature, a uniform pressure distribution, a uniform cooling, so you're ending up with a uniform shrinkage behavior. If you're ending up with a uniform shrinkage behavior, you will have the optimum part quality you can have from this particular tool. So here we have our four scenarios that we want to investigate. And again, I'll stop on the way. Other important factors in gating are to minimize weld lines, flow hesitations, and racetrack effects. For this evaluation, we are going to start with a two-drop hot runner as shown on screen. The drop on the right is placed in the center of the opening, and a cold runner with eight spokes and edge gates is used to achieve a symmetrical fill pattern. The drop on the left side of the part is placed directly on the part surface. For the first evaluation, the two drop dimensions are equal. From the filling animation, you can see that the fill pattern is very unbalanced, with the left side filling before the right side. Yeah, very, very clear to see that if you have a hot runner that has the same dimensional dimensions all throughout, we have a challenge on our hand because the left side will fill first, the right side fill last and um, why is this a problem well it's an ununiform fill behavior and if you re may remember how polymer materials are are designed you have very long molecular chains that are um, elongated or aligned when you injection mold through the gate you align these molecules so they can start to flow and of course they try to coil up when they get into the molds and they are, are stopped flowing and they can relax. But in this particular case, you have a shift. You have a shift in the pattern, in the flow pattern, which will what? Orient the molecules. And if the material is unfilled, it uh, may not be such a huge challenge, but if the material is fiber filled, my God, you got a problem on your hand. Let's take a more detailed look at this uneven fill pattern by analyzing the tracer results. Remember, tracers show the flow behavior of material behind the flow front. Here you can see red and blue tracers as the part fills. The red tracers show the flow through the drop feeding the smaller geometry section, and the blue tracers show the flow through the drop feeding the larger section. As soon as the smaller geometry is filled, the tracers redirect from the small drop gate to the larger after which both drops continue to fill the cavity. This sudden shift of flow changes molecular and fiber orientation, shear rate, and stress patterns. The overall filling process and resulting material behavior is not uniform, which will result in non-uniform material conditions inside the cavity. Yeah, that's very important to realize. So 
when one section that is usually filled from this from this hot runner is all of a sudden filled with material, then the flow again it keeps flowing through both gates. But this material flow now does not have to go to the left side on our view. It only has to go, it only can go to the right side of the view. And therefore, the flow energy now has shifted from the gate towards the right. And that again can elongate the molecular chains towards the right. They change direction. And we can align the molecules to the right. We can align the fibers to the right. We get more shear rate to the right. We get higher temperatures to the right. So the entire flow behavior will change if these two, uh, I would say, two geometry sections, meaning small left or large right, if they are not filled equally, it's a challenge. Moving into the injection pressure during filling, here you can see the animation for the first design. The pressure graph for this example shows that as soon as the smaller side of the geometry fills, the pressure line indicates a bumpy increase until the switchover point is reached, at which the pressure becomes regular. Yeah, it's not only that the material realigns themselves in the in the in the in the cavity towards the unfilled side but we also have a pressure um, accumulation in the, in the smaller side the material here is pressurized to a higher level as on the larger side during the fill pattern of course this can be you it can be a lot more uniform when we get to the packing phase but if you already have a pressure imbalance during filling that is not good. The next design configuration is a hot runner option with different drop dimensions. Here you can see that the left side drop is considerably smaller than the right side drop. Let's look at the fill pattern for this revised hot runner system. The different drop sizes have a significant impact on the fill pattern. Now you can see a very balanced pattern with the material reaching the parting line at the same time throughout. Let's look at the filling tracers for this setup. Here you can see the tracers follow a smooth fill pattern and there is no shift of the internal flow. Each hot drop fills its own section, which will result in more uniform material conditions inside the molded part. Again, this is a very simple example of a multi-gated part. Now these um, uh, flow tracers, you know, I call them massless particles, they show the behavior of the material behind the flow front. When you look at simulation results, as you always know, and you probably have experienced, you look at the flow front and how the flow front progresses through the cavity, but more so the tracers will show you the internal flow pattern that is not very obvious when you look at the simulation results. So these results are really important for me to look at because it tells me what the shift in the flow energy is inside of the mold and not just looking at the flow pattern, okay? So here we can tell there is no shift to left and right with our tracers. So each individual drop did its purpose of filling its individual section and therefore creating a uniform fill pattern. Again, this is a very simple example. Now, can you imagine when you go into larger parts like uh, car bumpers, etc.? Of course, these car bumpers are, you know, mainly um, injection molded with sequ sequential fill patterns. But wouldn't it be nice to understand how each drop in the hot runner uh, will contribute to the flow pattern? These tracer particles are really key to understand that. Here you can see the injection pressure during filling. Very smooth behavior. The pressure curves for the first two designs are overlaid on this graph. The red line indicates the first iteration with the same diameter hot drops, and the green line is the second design with the different sized hot drops. Although both systems show similar overall behavior, the second design has slightly higher pressure requirements, but a very smooth increase. 
Yeah, very smooth, a little bit higher pressure requirements due to the size, but remember this is what I want to see. Um, if you have dips and spikes in a, in, a, in a pressure curve inside of a mold, you have challenges and you're trying to avoid this. So in uh, simulation, of course, you can identify what these pressure uh, gradients are or this pressure behavior is and a smooth curve is much better than a bumpy one. Now that we've seen a hot runner system can be designed for this part, let's explore if another gate and runner option would work as well. Next, we will evaluate a three plate pinpoint gate runner system to evaluate whether or not we can achieve the same balance as we did with the second hot drop design, the first part of the lesson. Of course, this is, remember, this is training, okay, training lessons. Nobody would build a three-plate three plate mold with such a long three-plate design, but that's not the purpose of our training here. Yeah, the purpose is to show you a, uh, what the uh, sensitivity is in such a system if you would ever design it. I mean, if this part would be small, you maybe can get away with designing a three-plate mold like this. In reality, you wouldn't probably, but again, remember, this is training. In this second part, we will perform a runner design sensitivity test to evaluate the effect on fill patterns when minor adjustments to the gate and runners are made. On screen, you can see a simplified three-plate cold runner system, along with the details for the two tests we will run. Because we are performing a runner design sensitivity test, notice that the difference in runner sizes between the two designs is minimal. Only the cold drop leading to the smaller section has the minor drop in gate size variations. We will evaluate the sensitivity of the fill patterns based on these minor variations. just very sudden and small variations we're trying to trying to evaluate. Again, the reason here is to get a sense of um, how critical dimensions are in our, uh, our three-plate mold, okay? So is it very sensitive or not? This will tell us how sensitive our process will be at a later time as well. So studying these uh, effects is really important to gain knowledge about what you're trying to design. The fill pattern analysis for the first cold runner design indicates that the larger section is filled slightly before the smaller section. The tracer animation for the first cold runner design shows that at the end of the fill, red tracers shift to the blue side, indicating a slight fill imbalance. Yeah, very slight imbalance. Yeah, see the traces at the end making a making a B line to the left. Uh -huh. The second design version has a slightly larger runner system to the small side of the design to promote flow to this area. As you can see in this animation, the minor adjustment has the desired effect as the smaller geometry section fills a little earlier than the larger section. Here you can see the same behavior with the tracer analysis. The blue tracers shift toward the red tracer side shortly before the end of fill. The outcome of this runner design sensitivity test indicates that a small change to the runner and gate has a significant impact on the fill pattern, or in other words, that there is a high degree of sensitivity. This can result in process sensitivity, so should be avoided. Again, what we're trying to, to identify here is how sensitive is this part or the runner system to our fill behavior? And we've seen from shifting to the left, now shifting to the right, making a minor change to one of the runner, uh, one of the drops can make a difference in the fill pattern. Will it really impact the part quality at a later time? Uh, maybe, maybe not at all. But knowing that um, this runner system is so sensitive, to the, to the change in diameter, it will also tell you that when you change process conditions at the machine later on to make a part, it's probably sensitive as well. Okay? Good information to have for our process engineers. This concludes Cold Runner, Lesson 5, Balancing Multigated Parts. In this lesson, you learned factors to consider when implementing a multiple gating strategy. 
how different rubber dimensions affect filling behavior and injection pressure requirements. How do we analyze tracer results to see behind the flow front of a part filling? How to use a runner design sensitivity test to determine whether small changes to runner and gate sizes affect filling patterns. Injection molded parts can be simple or complex. Evaluating and optimizing part, gate, runner, and mold design is integral to success. Uniform filling, packing, and cooling behaviors lead to an optimized molding system resulting in high quality molded parts. And again, this is all really what, what we would like to understand is every project has its challenges and uh, multi-gated parts with uh, variant geometries are really challenging as we can tell. And it is, wouldn't it be nice to know upfront what needs to be done to better um, process this part based on the geometry and the runner system layout and sizing? This can be evaluated up front, and I believe it should be because this is a value, valuable information, especially when you um, injection mold highly filled materials, because as you know, highly filled materials, especially glass or carbon filled materials, do not like these kind of flow energy shifts in the cavity because it redirects the fibers, which then will cause part warpage, okay? So next time you have a project that uh, involves multi-gated uh, setup, just think about what we just learned today and what we've looked at. And yeah, just implement it if possible. We have a question. Okay, so we have a question here. It says, what more can you say about knit lines on this part due to the filling? Well, knit lines are always a challenge, as you know, because you know knit lines can be weak if they have a certain uh, physiologically uh, uh, structure. What I mean with that is a knit line develops um, when you have two flow fronts flowing together. And usually when they flow together butt on, that means straight on, they are, can be a challenge. So for example, if you see on the screen, this is your wall thickness material comes from one side and another material comes from the other side. If they meet straight on, head on, this could be a knit line and uh, this could be a weak spot in your palm. Yeah? But if you have a system that has a little bit of more of an angle, yeah? so for example, let me draw this uh, 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 with my pen. For example, if we have a small plate uh, with a hole in the side and uh, the weld lines, uh, the gate is right over here, material flows around. Excuse my drawing here, it's hard to do with a mouse. Yeah, so depending on what this angle is, this angle of the weld line, if it's round, that was a little little starter point, if this is uh, the flow front, they meet at a certain angle here, yeah? If this is a large angle, this weld line will be potentially okay. Yeah? If it's a weld line that is more of a V shape, yeah, that could be a challenge. So the fill pattern in this particular part needs to be uh, uh, accommodate a weld line or should achieve a weld line that has more of an angle to it. This will lead them to a more stronger weld line, which we then can tell it's more of a melt line versus a weld line or knit line. That's our goal to achieve, okay? And you can achieve this with, again, with uh, sizing these drops and of course with um, uh, uh, Speed, yeah, speed and injection is important for the viscosity, for the temperature distribution, and, uh, and for the pressure distribution as well. Okay, thank you for the question. Okay, so as we said, next time you are experiencing or working with a um, multi-gated part, wouldn't it be nice to at least consider 
the fact that you can adjust runner systems, gate systems to um, achieve a more uniform fill pattern in the multi-gated part. Again, this is what we're trying to do. This is what we're trying to teach. This is what is online available for everybody. The circle of knowledge, part designers, mold designers, and processors. Uh, that's our goal to really have our lessons online so you can have access 24-7, 365 from any device um, for starting to implement some of our findings and maybe to help your fellow younger engineers to get up to speed and be part of the circle of knowledge group. So if you don't have any questions anymore, thank you for participating. Uh, next month, we have one more webinar coming up. Please join us, of course. And then we go a little bit in the summer, a summer pause and we'll be back in the fall then with some more. But in the meantime, don't hesitate to contact us. We are glad to help if you have any questions about what you just learned. Thank you very much, everybody.